Do you think you've got all of the drone rules covered? Well, you might be breaking a few without even realizing it. In this video, we're exposing five FAA drone rules that catch drone pilots off guard. And trust me, some of these can cost you big time. Stick around because the last one is super common, but can be fixed in just 30 seconds. Let's dive in and keep you flying safe and legal. This is Adam with UAV Coach, and as a leading drone education company, we're here to help drone pilots fly safely and legally. Just a heads up, these rules apply specifically to the US, but we've got a list of global drone laws linked in the description. Now, let's get into it. The most popular FAA drone rule you might be breaking is flying beyond visual line of sight, also known as BVLOS. In the US, a drone must be operated within the direct visual range of the pilot, allowing the pilot to see the drone without any visual aids, other than corrective lenses. VLOS, or visual line of sight, ensures that the operator can monitor the drone's position and respond to potential hazards in real time. So, if you are flying a drone for recreational or commercial purposes beyond your visual line of sight, you are technically breaking that rule. Now, we want to be clear that VLOS means that it's within your sight at all times, not in your sight at all times, which can be a big difference. This means that you don't have to always be staring at the drone. That would kind of defeat the purpose of looking at your controller while flying or having the drone follow you from behind. It just means that throughout the flight, you can look up and easily find the drone and know where it is in relation to other objects. So to not break this rule, it's pretty straightforward. If you're a recreational pilot, just don't fly your drone beyond your visual line of sight. Make sure that the drone is always visible to you when you look up to find it. If you are a commercial pilot, you can either make sure it's in your line of sight or apply for a special waiver to fly beyond your visual line of sight. The second rule that is most commonly broken is when recreational pilots fly without a trust certificate. If you're flying for fun and do not have your Part 107 license, you need to have a trust certificate. Trust stands for the Recreational UAS Safety Test and is a requirement from the FAA for recreational drone pilots. All you do is go through a free online training, pass a short multiple choice test, and get your certification of completion. The whole process takes about 30 minutes and you don't need any prior drone knowledge. UAV Coach is an FAA approved trust test administrator and we offer a free online course and exam to help pilots easily obtain their trust certificate. Again, all recreational pilots must pass this test to legally fly drones in the US. The third most commonly broken rule is flying a drone over people without a waiver or special exceptions. Flying a drone over people is generally prohibited unless certain conditions are met. You cannot fly over people unless they are directly involved in your operation, under a covered structure, or inside a stationary vehicle that protects them from a falling drone. However, there are exceptions. You can fly over people if your drone meets Category 1 requirements which include drones under 250 grams or 0.55 pounds with prop guards. For drones up to 399 grams or 0.88 pounds, you'll need to obtain an FAA waiver, which is now easier to get through the FAA's Drone Zone website. Some drones, like the EBX, DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise, and a few more are approved under category two and three for flying over people, but these are limited. If your drone weighs more than 250 grams, it's recommended that you apply for an FAA waiver if you're a commercial pilot. Keep in mind that recreational pilots are not allowed to do this. The fourth drone rule that's commonly broken is flying from a vehicle or over moving vehicles. If you are a commercial pilot, you are not allowed to fly your drone from a moving vehicle unless you're in a sparsely populated area and not transporting goods for hire. You could also apply for a waiver to fly over moving vehicles, just like you can for operations over people. For recreational flights, guidelines emphasize maintaining visual line of sight and avoiding flying over people, 
which can be challenging from a moving vehicle. However, if you're driving in a sparsely populated area, flying is allowed as long as you follow these safety guidelines and avoid reckless behavior. If the vehicle is not moving, the restrictions on moving vehicles don't apply, but you must still comply with all other relevant regulations. But what about flying over other vehicles, like flying over a highway? Generally, you cannot fly your drone over a highway unless the drone weighs less than 250 grams with propeller guards installed, and even then, only for brief transit over moving vehicles under category one. This basically means the drone has to be moving at all times. The FAA recently updated its waiver requirements, allowing drones weighing between 250 and 399 grams with prop guards and anti-collision lights to potentially get a waiver for flying over people, like mentioned previously, and moving vehicles, provided they meet safety standards. Again, recreational pilots are not allowed to apply for this waiver or fly over other moving vehicles. The fifth and final rule that is usually broken is flying in controlled airspace without prior authorization. Whether you're a recreational or commercial drone pilot, if you are flying outside of Class G or uncontrolled airspace, you need to apply for prior authorization. The great news is this is usually very simple and easy to do. You just download a Lance approved app like Aloft or Autopilot, enter your mission details and apply for authorization. And in a few seconds, they will send you a text that you are approved. But why do this? Well, one, it's the legal way to fly. And two, if anything unfortunate happens, like an accident or law enforcement asks you what you're doing, you can show proof that you have authorization to fly in that area legally. It literally takes 30 seconds to do and could save you thousands of dollars. So please just download one of those apps and apply for authorization if you're flying in controlled airspace like class B, C, D, or E. It's really a no brainer. And there you have it five common FAA drone rules you've probably broken at one time or another. I know I sadly have, especially when starting out. The whole point of this video is to educate pilots on how to fly safely and legally. This not only keeps pilots and people safe, but also helps ensure that this hobby and profession continues to grow. If you're interested in becoming a commercial pilot and getting your Part 107 certificate, we have a great online test prep course called Drone Pilot Ground School to help you study for the exam check it out in the first link below. And for all of the waivers I mentioned, you can apply for those at FAADroneZone.com, which we'll link in the description as well. Also, in the comments, let us know if you've ever broken any of these rules. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our future drone videos. Until next time, blue skies and safe flying.